Hi, my name is Robert Dempster. I am your games art demonstrator. And today I'm going to run through a series of videos with an introduction to a software called 3D Coat. The software is commonly used for its voxel capability and it's very versatile. It's almost like modeling with clay. So we're going to start with the very basics from looking at the UI and also looking at the most commonly used tools. We'll create some basic shapes and then we'll move on to creating a character. So with this character process, it's going to be uh, quite abstract and we're going to model on top of it. And then we're going to texture the model, render it all within the same software. And then we're going to put that into Adobe Photoshop where we'll start painting into this character. Okay, so that will run through the entire process of how to create a finalized character concept. So without further ado, let's continue so in this introduction to 3d coat we're going to run through some of the basic tools within the software and when you go and load 3d coat you're going to be met with this welcome screen so we're going to go through some of the other tools in later lessons but for now we're going to jump straight into voxel sculpting okay and when you select voxel sculpting we're going to have uh, quite a few options here so you can choose some standard objects we've got a folder here where you can load your own objects for now, I'm just going to load this grid and then we're going to jump straight into it. So what are the shortcuts? When you hold your mouse, if you hold left click, it's going to move around that center axis. When you hold right click and move from left to right, it's going to zoom in and out. And when you hold middle mouse button, it's going to pan around those axes. Okay, so just get used to that. Hold left click pan around hold right click that's going to zoom in and then hold middle mouse if you need to pan along that axis okay so just get used to that and then we can continue so on the left hand side we've got all of our voxel tools and i explain to you how we can use these voxel tools shortly and on the right hand side we've got some of the tools for the voxel sculpting so we've got our brushes we can choose some different options for our brushes. We also have the shaders and we have our Vox tree layers. So much like Photoshop, when you can create a new layer, when you create a new object, you might want to split them off into multiple layers. So that's how we use this Vox tree. So how do we start by adding an object? Now, if you go back to file and new, and we go to this voxel sculpting, you can select a standard primitive here or I'll show you another way. So we're going to go back onto this, um, this grid and we're going to scroll down and we're going to select primitives. So when you pr select primitives, we've got all of our primitives at the top of the screen and we're going to go ahead and select the cube. So the cube is very small at the moment on this grid. So we're going to need to zoom in. You can hold right click and move to the right. So that's going to zoom in and in the center here, we have our scale, which is going to scale uniformly. So it scales the entire thing. So if you select that cube in the center, hold left click and drag, then it's going to make that cube a bit bigger. Okay. Now, if you want to stretch this out, there's also these cubes on this side and you can pull them along this axis and get the desired shape that you want before you start modeling. Okay, so I'll stick with this for now. We also have these arrows and you can move this up and down from left to right. And we can also pivot with these markers right at the end so we can piv pivot our box. I don't want to do that, so I'm going to press Control Z just to undo that. And you notice that there's a slight ghosting here. It's not actually there yet. That's because we haven't applied this tool. So we can see up here, it says apply and add. We've also got some other sections here and I'm gonna show you the subtract soon. So we're gonna select apply, which is set to add. And that now applies the object. And you can see there's this horrible ghosting effect here. That's because that cube is now within our actual voxel cube. So if I move this to the side, we can see, there we go. We've got our cube and we've also got our new ghosted cube, which is great because it's going to remember that size because if I wanted more cubes of that size, I could just hit apply again and it will create a new one. 
Yeah, and I can keep going, so on and so forth. So when I want to get rid of this, I can just go on to any of my other tools. Let's just select grow for now. And now here we are, we've got our cubes. So what if I wanted to subtract from this cube? If I go back onto my primitives, I'm going to move this cube up and I'm just going to stretch this out just so it's a different size. Okay. And then I'm going to move this over and I'm going to make these cut through those two cubes. Right. So if I wanted to add that cube to it, I could go to add and apply. And that's going to add those two cubes together. Okay, so now they're joined on this one layer. If I didn't want that, I'm going to press Ctrl Z to undo. I can select this add and select subtract instead. And now when I hit apply, it's going to cut straight through it. Okay, very handy. Really cool tool. So much like uh, a Boolean tool in Maya, this will do the exact same thing, but instead we're not using vertices, we're using a dense model, which is voxels in this case. So if you press W on the keyboard and zoom in, we can see all of the voxels, all of these tiny squares that make up this object. Yeah, and in this case, there's over 3 million. If you want to see how many voxels are there, we can go down to the visible triangles here, or we can scroll all the way down to resample, and we can see our resample. So for you know a basic object, you don't want to go too high. So we could bring this down for now. Let's bring it down to uh, about 700,000. Click OK. And it does lower the quality of the model. We can see there's a slight uh, bevel now. But if this is going to be something that's going to be very small, then again, we don't need too, much, um, too many triangles there. So again, let's shrink this down. Let's move this down. Again, we're selecting primitives. And I'm going to move this into place. And you can just keep going. You can press apply. That will subtract it. And as you can imagine, this is amazing for hard surface modeling. You can very easily come up with some really cool sci-fi designs just with these tools alone. So that's our primitives. You can choose any other object. You can experiment with them. But now I'm just going to use this cube. And again, what I love about this is that it's going to save that size, right? So if I go off onto a different tool and go back to my primitives, where have we gone? There we are. Then it's going to remember that size and it's going to be there. If you ever want to reset the size, you can press reset and you can also reset the axes if you have tilted it. Okay, so they are our primitive tools. I'm going to go straight to our cut tool. So adjust and cut off and I'm going to show you how we can snap this grid so we're currently in a perspective grid at the moment which means that um, there's perspective applied now when we cut through this object uh, I'll quickly show you cut through and then I'll explain how to use that tool so if I cut through it then we can see that it didn't cut entirely straight and that's because we're in perspective and we need to try and remove the perspective first before we can cut a nice smooth line all the way through. So we do that up here. And up here, there is this little box here that toggles between the orthographic view and the perspective view. So we want to turn off from perspective, press the box, the screen will turn blue, and now we're in a orthographic view, so it's removed that perspective. Now to snap the grid, when you're holding Alt and left click, to move we can hold shift at the same time and it's gonna snap okay so you can hold alt hold left click to move your mouse press shift at the same time and it will snap along that axis and we can do that along any axis here yeah we could do that at the top do it at the bottom and so on and so forth so if I wanted to cut through this I can select the cut off tool and I can press E on the keyboard and that's going to bring up our cutoff tools. So I could go ahead and select something like this square and hold left click drag and that's going to cut all the way through it. I can press E and use the rectangular tool. So now I've got a, a free transform rectangular tool here that I can cut off. 
Okay, we're going to press Control Z just to undo this. And E. And, you know, you can go through all of these tools. They're re really handy. This one is the uh, Vertex Lasso. So I can hold left click, click left click again, and I can make a custom shape here. And then just double click. And that's going to cut all the way through. Very cool. So we can get some nice custom shapes. And then let's just go all the way down to the last one, which is the closed spine, which allows us to create some nice curved shapes. Click all the way around, double click, and now we've got a nice curve. So what if you wanted to cut through this, but you wanted to um, do the exact same thing on the other side? So we need to mirror that. And we're gonna use the symmetry tool to do that. So I'm gonna go up to symmetry here and press symmetry or you can press S on the keyboard and we can choose an axis that we're going to cut through so let's say we choose the X axis in this case and we've got it set to enable we've got the X axis enabled if you're unsure whether it's snapped to the middle you can always press uh, pick from bounding box and we can see that's now gone straight back to the middle there so if you're ever unsure just select pick from bound box and now when we use cut off and double click it's going to cut straight through to the other side and we can already see we're getting some cool kind of sci-fi shapes here so very handy tools and you can create an awful lot with just these tools and um, again especially for hard surface so if I wanted to create some sort of um, ridge on the side here what I could do is I could use my box I could get the exact shape that I wanted. Yeah, so let's just see if this goes through. Let's make this a little bit thinner. And we've got our symmetry tool on, which means it's going to go straight through to the other side. And I've got subtract on, so I could press apply. I could move this over. I could press apply again. And just keep subtracting from this form. The next one, maybe I want to add something to it. So I can press add, and that's going to add that shape. And then again, go back to subtract uh, and apply. And there we go. So this pretty much covers some of these basic tools. We've also got grow and smooth so we can smooth out this object. Okay. Uh, but you have to use this kind of sparingly because it can get a little bit messy. If you're using anything that's hard surface, you don't really want to have to use this. Uh, this is more for organic shapes. And then we'll get into some of the other tools um, in another lesson. So on the right hand side, we've got our different brushes and we can use these. Let's say we go to something like extrude. We could use these different brushes here. And if you press the bracket keys on the keyboard next to P, then we can increase or decrease this radius and we can see this radius goes up and down in this number here and then we can start sculpting onto it so my depth is currently at two i can set this to a hundred smoothing set to a hundred and then i can start sculpting onto this so holding a left click will sculpt and if i hold um, control while sculpting then it will sculpt inwards okay if you want anything that's more precise if you press e again that's going to bring up our tools and you might want to use something else so let's say we use this one which is our vertex line which will allow us to draw a line and then extrude that way and again we could do the same thing press left click hold control and then press left click again and now we've cut into it Yes, yeah, so they're just some of those tools. So there are brushes. Now we've got our shaders, which means we can change the, the material type. You can already see we're starting to get some really nice hard surface designs here. And we've got metals. This is all set to default. We can go over to cartoon. Got some cool styles there. Okay, we've got fabrics. And, you know, you can add your own and you can customize your own materials got metals miscellaneous so things like wood effects we've got paint I especially like this one this one's really nice to model with got a nice reflective surface there polymer so just experiment with these just go through them 
see which one you like you might have a specific material that you like to model with so find that one that works for you it might be something that's very matte and uh, and neutral you don't want anything too shiny or maybe you want something that's a little bit more glossier okay so just get used to that so that pretty much covers everything in this lesson and then we're going to move on to some more advanced tools in the next lesson okay see you soon goodbye